you have become a regular. How are you today, Tracy? Hey, good. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Hey, Tracy. So how, hey, how do you yes. take care of your claws? Uh, uh, I mean, your fingernails. My, yeah. my yeah. cat's claws. Yeah. <laughs> Tracy also, yeah, that's what I want to say. Tracy also has one cat. Tracy or more? Uh, I, well, I have one coming in three weeks. Um, oh. So, uh, but usually I clip my cat's claws and I get mine done. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's the only thing I've been right about today. Okay. So, uh, great now we have the headline for the interview. They, yeah. Right? So, all right, that's a tag. <laughs> um, so, Tracy, you want me to share my screen as we go through things? Yeah, perfect. Okay. Tracy, you want to switch on your camera? Uh no. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's only for summits. That's not. Yeah, that's only for special occasions. <laughs> okay. So, why don't we start here? since we're not clear uh, here in <clears throat> face about uh, what was the catalyst for the rebounding crude. Was it an OPEC announcement? Yeah. Well, there was, a, there was a meeting yesterday uh, with Saudi Arabia and G20 nations, uh, energy ministers. Um, so, you know, basically, a, you know, but we got a bunch of headlines out of that saying, you know, we're watching the oil market. We're going to do everything we can blah, blah, blah. Um, we also had a worker strike in Norway. So uh, oh. th uh, three, what is it? Um, like 300,000, 330,000 barrels per day are offline right now. Okay. Um, then we had Fujara oil stocks came out and they declined for um, a, fit, a fifth week. So we're at like an eight month low. And then we have a lot of bullish news this morning. <laughs> yeah, and then Total finally. came out and said that basically their retail demand in Europe is almost back to uh, levels that were uh, this time last year. So there was a bunch of, uh, bunch of bullish news that, that came out. Well, morning. I'm sure most of your followers know and anyone that was at the summit knows that uh, you have uh, become constructive to bullish in the oil complex and uh, we had this pullback in here. Um, do you think that, uh, what are your levels for accumulating oil? Was that it last week or could we, do you have any? I mean, we could lower? take another leg lower. I mean, right now there's so many factors, you know, we do have Europe starting to shut down again. So if mm -hmm. we have, you know, right now it's in select cities um, and there's, you know, not total shutdowns, but we have restrictions. So, you know, if everything starts shutting down again, then oil will take a huge leg lower. <laughs> um, okay. But so right now, there's just too many kind of unknowns to quantify. I mean, I think from here on out to the rest of the year, I don't really see a ton more upside. Um, you know, I think we're again, I, you, I talked about this at the summit. You know, I think we're pretty much in range that 30 to 40 dollar range, um, okay. at least for the rest of the year. Um, again, unless something happens and the whole world goes on lockdown again, of course. Okay. So uh, really the only uh, negative you see out there is uh, the unpredictability of like a second wave. Yeah. I mean, right and... now things seem to be improving. Um, yeah. You know, we'll have to see, you know, it's kind of, you know, take it month by month right now. Um, okay. You know, and it's the same with any kind of macro data right now coming out of everywhere. Yeah. Especially once we get into, well, maybe not this November with what's going on, uh, you know, politically here in the U.S., but, you know, sometimes November, December is kind of a quiet, calm period yeah, in and, the and market. Yeah, and it's definitely a, the, it's a seasonal soft period for oil as well, right? Okay. Demand right. is down during the winter, generally, oh. anyway. So okay. um, that's and why I don't I, really see a ton of upside right now. And that's I notice, you know, with... Uh, uh, some money coming out of the high growth stocks like Amazon and Microsoft, uh, yeah. their, their uh, uh, bounces were marginal and that people actually came in and there was uh, a little interest and a little strength in oil shares last week. Yep. I, yes, there was. There was. So. Even when crude was down. Even when People, crude was down, and is um, it just rotation or are they are, are these longer term players I mean, that see that's, value? 
that's definitely something that I'm watching because, you know, what you want to watch is like financials, you know, any of the value stocks, if we start seeing that, like Boeing had a great week last week, right? Um, yeah. So it kind of, it looks like there might be a bit of rotation here. Um, okay. So, you know, which would be obviously positive for oil equities, which have just taken a beat, beating all uh, year. <laughs> okay. One of our attendees and, you know, uh, Great Britain used to be a big play with North Sea oil. Uh, would a Brexit deal or no deal have impact on crude? Um, I I don't think it will it will affect that much at all. I mean, uh, oil flows are oil flows. It's not you know a, yeah. that won't change any of the oil flows. Okay, and. Uh, let me ask you where you're you're at with uh, the dollar. I know your preferred short in the dollar is uh, euro. Uh, we pulled back from the 120 level pretty good. and Yeah, that was a nice trade. I mean, I'm still bullish uh, the dollar. Um, you know, we had a nice bounce. Um, right now we're kind of at a make or break period. Like, you know. It's where do you see it? 93-ish or? Or what for make or break in Dixie? So yeah, like 90, 93, like 93 ish, you know, if it's kind of breaks there, if you can kind of see that consolidation if you look left. Yeah. Right. So yeah. you know, we could go back down in there and bounce the, bounce there in a while for a while and then bounce out. Uh, but you know, that's kind of the area you don't really want to be long below that, in my opinion. Okay. All right, so uh, make or break in uh, euro as well. Is that uh, your preferred short? Maybe back over 118, you have to throw in the towel for euro, otherwise we could get. Uh, yeah. Do you have any downside targets? If the dollar gets legs, that could take the euro down to, what, maybe 114, uh, looking at the daily. You know, the, if we got back through this 116 level, maybe – prior right highs yes, here right, right. right here exactly okay am my, i a, my next next area you know okay. that would am be i nice. a chart mind reader you are all <laughs> right so uh on 114 and uh what else are you paying attention to right um now? really right that's you know that's really what i'm focused on and um nasdaq Oh, okay. So NASDAQ, uh, we hardly ever talk about this. Um, what are you thinking? It was a pretty uh, kind of ugly day Friday when the COVID news uh, broke. Uh, S&P's recovered to not be to be down like half a percent, but NASDAQ was down two and a half, two and three quarters percent. Um, is this a tell that this correction in the market isn't over? Is that what you're thinking? I'm, that's what I'm thinking. You know, I would have, I would say, you know, I'm really watching to see if we uh, retest that like uh, 11,200 area, you know, right there. These lows, because if, yeah. Yeah, because if, I think if we hit it again, it's likely to break. So I'm watching for a break of that. If not, then, you know, then it's back to new highs. But I think right now with all of, um, you know, Trump has COVID and um, the, with some uncertainty with the elections, you know, I, I'm not positive we'll see new highs this year. We, we, we totally couldn't. Um, but, um, you know, we might, you know, kind of stall out here a little bit. Okay. Well, I know you're looking at the NASDAQ and maybe it doesn't show up as well, but um, I've been talking about this for a while and Steve brought it up today. What do you think of this uh, formation right here in Amazon? Well, Isn't that it, out of a textbook? It, well, it's they all kind of look like Nasdaq. I mean, all, all the like thing. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't see a head and shoulders in the Nasdaq, but on, on some of the components, yeah, like you can, this right. and like Microsoft. They kind, you know, you have a straight neckline across both of them, and you know we could get extend the right shoulder a bit, but I think Friday was a tell, and um, 
maybe even copper was a tell. You following the action in copper for? Oh yeah, absolutely. I think I I wrote about it last week actually. Um, what do you what do you write what are your writing saying? So I, all I did I mean what happened is is that um, they had the LME stocks surged forty eight percent. Right. Is that a, a huge number that you've never that's seen before? Num- that's a huge for to, to surge, you know, it, it, for, yeah. for, that's a lot. Um, and then <laughs> Shanghai. <laughs> it's a lot of and, pennies. Right. And then yeah. the, the Shanghai market um, had its ninth consecutive week of, of build. So really, my theory is this kind of... Um, false recovery in China, right? Because it's all just stimulus, right? They're just right. building everything and they're ordering everything. But, you know, I kind of think that may be showing signs of, you know, weakness in their recovery. So yeah. it's not quite as V-shaped as they say. Um, if their stocks are rising and LME stocks are rising, um, you know, at the same time, you know, there is more product coming online because of the closures in Brazil, Peru, uh, and Brazil and Peru just because of COVID, but still, I mean, that's a big surge. <laughs> what do you think about uh, mid to lower 260s uh, possibility here? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And so, I, don't think, I mean, the market's pretty overdone. <laughs> yeah, it, it definitely, I, I, I figured maybe I would just do this just to see what we have here. So here's some fibs on copper. And halfway back is going to be about 255, 618, 242. And it could still be an uptrend. So I, I'm assuming right around here is about 38%. So, you know, I want to talk to you because uh, I remember a time period when gold was getting smashed. And I even tweeted uh, about it that you say everything is about yields. So what do you think about what's happening here in this uh 10 year so here's a 30 look at this here's a 10 and you know i'm looking at this and you know for a well, long time uh, you know and, and with paul the backdrop being we're not even thinking of thinking of thinking of ever, raising rates uh, ever again <laughs> yeah doesn't it look like uh yields are getting sticky here and could head head up it kind of, I mean, it looks like that. It looks like, you know, people are, uh, you know, that there's like a steepener happening right now in the market, yeah. right? So, yeah, you could so- see that between this is a 10 and then look at the 30. It has a much steeper angle back up and it's approaching, uh, in fact, uh, it's 200 day, it's 156. So uh, we start getting through there. Um this is what the Fed would want, right? Because it uh, should help the banks with the uh, yield yield curve steepening, right? It should. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what's going to help the banks, but right. <laughs> uh, any, anyway, I mean, if uh, yields are heading up, wouldn't that be negative even for the precious metals? I know you're you're gold bullish and it's still acting okay, but. It's still uh, acting okay, but I mean, there could be pressure on it, you know, and gold is also, you know, in times of uncertainty, you know, it's it's also a safety trade. So, you know, I don't really see, you know, I, I get, I think, you know, and I think I said this last time, I think we're going to be kind of range bound right now um, because I just don't see, even if it, you know, Even if the if yields change, you know, the, and gold should pull back, I just don't see it happening right this second. Okay, because not uh, until yeah. maybe after the election's over, and even maybe not then, because after the election's over, who knows exactly what's going to happen? I mean, I kind of feel like this might be dragged on for days and days and days afterwards, with you know, vote counts and things like that. Okay, <laughs> so. Uh... At the summit, uh, there, you know, there was an announcement. I didn't have the pleasure of interviewing you that you had have made a move uh, professionally. You want to talk about it at all? And sure, yeah, I, I, uh, I'm writing uh, at Hedge Fund Telemetry now. So, um, if you want, you can sign up for a two week trial. And there it is. There you go. Um, that's who's me. this guy? <laughs> so that's Tommy Thornton. Okay. 
Um, Tommy Thornton, and uh, and there you are. And there I am. So um, yeah, so I would love everybody to at least sign up for a trial and see if uh, you like it. I hope that you do. Okay, world class hedge fund research, and uh, congratulations. Uh, I wish you you know a lot of success here. I'm a, you know I'm a fan, and I'm gonna I'm gonna sign up now. All right. <laughs> All right, so I, I'm going to sign up. Uh, so here's some of the prices: thousand a year it sounds like a lot, but break it down by the month, and it's like you know ten cents a contract a month. So uh, looks reasonable to me. And Tracy, I, uh, you know, I'm always rooting for you. And um, if is there anything you wanted to wrap this interview? I know it's a little short time wise, but you know, you and I are kind of uh, proficient at covering ground together anything else you wanted to cover um, no i think that's it I... anything else you're trading that uh you know you want to mention um not i mean not really i have you know i i have trade wrecks on uh my research so um you know if you sign up you'll get my trade wrecks and be able to track those um and they're okay. in not not just uh com they're not just a commodity futures but also um in equities and uh energy sector and materials sector okay so if i wanted to know the issues you talked about uh oil issues <clears throat> that you know have a footprint in africa like you talked about mambia and some other countries in africa which you think is going to be a, a big growth area uh, for energy, I could find them here. So, yes. Okay. And are you still a USC fan? Am I still a USC fan? I have to be. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, are you glad that we're going to be able to see a couple of Pac-12 games? Yeah, that'll be uh, nice. If, you all know. right. All right. All right. Well, thank you so much, Tracy, for being here today and giving us clean concise uh, opinions and the best of luck on your your new venture i i hope that uh your, your subscriptions mushroom all right you thank you board. okay all right thanks thanks so everyone and you could follow tracy still on twitter at shy girl not g-i-r-l g-r-l c-h-i-g-r-l for tracy shukart and yes. thanks, ag thanks again, Tracy, for being with us and good hunting this week. Thank you. And thank you guys. As always, it's always a pleasure. You're, you're a regular now My right. trade or your sister. All right. So that's a wrap, everyone. Uh, see everyone for Turnaround Tuesday. Remember, don't just count your oil barrels or your bullion or your NASDAQ stocks. Count your blessings and we'll see everyone tomorrow. Adios, and I'll see everyone for Turnaround Tuesday. Have a great one. Thanks again, Trace. Thank you.